Welcome to the Business of Influence podcast. I'm your host, Karen White. If you're a creator or a community maker looking to expand your influence, increase revenue, profit, and productivity, you're in the right place. Join me every Tuesday to learn strategies to elevate your career as a professional influencer. Thanks for joining me on today's episode. Now let's get started. One of the questions I regularly see pop up in the influencer community is how do brands find the influencers they work with? It's a really good question and as an influencer or a content creator, understanding how brands identify influencers they want to work with can go a really long way in helping you develop meaningful collaborations with brands. In today's episode, we'll be discussing five primary ways that influencers can explore to secure opportunities to work with brands. These five ways are with direct relationships, influencer agencies, talent managers and scouts, influencer marketing platforms, and networking events and referrals. It's worth noting before we begin that there are other methods that brands find the talent that they work with, such as through advertising, creative, and PR agencies. That's another primary method that brands find influencers to work with. We're not going to delve into that pathway in today's episode. And that's because working with agencies such as these creative and PR agencies means that influencers often have less autonomy and control of these relationships. So we'll take a look at those relationships in a later episode. With that said, let's get started. First of all, we're going to discuss direct relationships. A direct relationship is when brands reach out directly to you or you might reach out directly to a brand. It's pretty much how it sounds. It's when brands find and approach you directly or when you pitch yourself into brands. They're going to look at your work or they've seen your work, the potential for brand alignment and the potential in a brand partnership. There are some advantages to a direct brand to influencer relationship and they are, it provides direct communication without delays and dilution of messaging through any third party agency. It's really nice you're going straight into the brand and you're having that strong dialogue and direct conversation and communication. It can lead to more genuine partnerships as once again, there's no middleman. There's no agency in the middle. So the brand's getting a real feel for who you are through that direct communication method. And additionally, the talent fee, your fee can be more cost effective due to there not being any commission or markup by an agency or a platform. And you might not be as experienced in negotiating rates and therefore may be more likely to accept a lesser fee in direct communication rather than, say, an agency negotiating on your behalf. Now, that's a definite benefit for the brand. It's definitely not a benefit for you. Now, some of the disadvantages are, first of all, that it's time consuming. From the brand side, the brand needs to do their own research and vetting into the suitability of working with the talent and handle all of the communication. So it's not being handled by someone either on your behalf or the brand's behalf. You're involved in that direct communication process. 
Secondly, it does require individual negotiation. And if you've listened to previous episode, you'll understand that there's a lot of work that goes into that negotiation process to agreeing on deliverables, timings, inclusions, exclusions, payment, and so forth. So we know that it's a time-consuming process, but it's a very important process. So if the talent are being managed by an in-house team and sitting outside a larger campaign strategy, it might mean that the brand needs to continue to liaise with their external agencies to discuss any relationship costs that need to take additional management from their side. So they might have a budget for a particular campaign, They've decided to work directly with you. They need to continue to liaise with any external agency that they might have to say, all right, we've decided to spend $10,000 ourselves. We might adjust the budget accordingly. So there's communication that needs to take place. That scenario doesn't always happen. Often the brands have their own budgets in-house, but that's one example of a scenario. And it also presents the challenge that campaign deliverables might not be harmonised or consistent across all talent on a specific campaign. So if the brand is dealing direct and then you've got agency dealing with talent, there's going to be some potentially some discrepancies and anomalies in the deliverables and that just takes additional management from the brand side. And one of the challenges that you'll have is that identifying brands that deal with talent directly can be difficult. The larger the brand, the more established the brand, the more likely it is they will have multiple agencies managing talent on their behalf. Budgets can be allocated across these multiple agencies. So it might be, as we discussed earlier, their creative or advertising agencies, their PR agencies, in addition to other types of agencies. So there's pools of influencer marketing budgets sitting across different agencies for the brand. So identifying brands that also do these direct relationships in-house can be difficult and it can be time consuming on your part. So it might be that you get a whole lot of no's before you get a yes. So that's one of the disadvantages that you have when you're trying to investigate the direct to brand relationship. Next up, we're going to talk about influencer agencies. So often you'll hear about talent managers or management, and there's different types of agencies. So let's first of all talk about influencer agencies. Now, influencer agencies play a really important role in bridging the gap between brands and influencers. And brand relationships are often two-way with influencer agencies. The first way it works is that influencer agencies have a talent roster of influencers. They understand your strengths and then pitch them in to the brands. The second way these relationship works between influencer agencies and brand is that usually there's a deep relationship between the brand and the agency. So influencer agencies can often be the first point of contacts for brands when booking talent, either from the agency roster or also for scouting. So that's looking for talent that the agency might not already represent that are going to be suitable for the brand's need. And we'll talk about scouting a little later in today's episode. Of course, there's some good advantages to the brand to influencer agency relationship. First of all, the services of the influencer agencies are really clear. They work with influencers. Brands can be quite confident when they come to an influencer agency versus a bigger talent agency, they'll find a good portfolio of influencers to meet their campaign objectives. They're going to an influencer agency who represent influencers. They're going to be able to find the talent they need for their campaign. Agencies also offer a streamlined collaboration process. They handle all of the administrative tasks, negotiations, contracts, 
and payment processes as well. And for influencers, this means that you're getting representation, professional representation and a professional touch to the partnerships, which the brands really enjoy. You've heard that saying, time is money. And the more time that people need to spend on streamlining these processes, it becomes frustrating and brands can often move on if they're not getting the results they need. And to that point, when you're dealing with a brand, they often choose to go through an agency because there's nothing worse than identifying talent that you want to work with. And the only mechanism to contact them is via a DM and that the influencer replies, you know, many, many hours later or sometimes days later. And it's not a streamlined process. You need to be responsive and readily contactable and generally be able to keep momentum on campaign inquiries through business hours because generally that's when the agencies are working. So they want to keep moving. If you're not there, if you're not responding within a reasonable time frame, they'll move on. So that's where a really big benefit comes in in having agency representation because they're there to keep the communication flowing, which frees you up to focus on creating the content and do what you do best. So having that agency representation elevates you to being viewed as a more professional and successful influencer. So all the benefits that you enjoy from that streamlined collaboration process also benefit the brand. It's really important. Now, there are fees from having a brand to influencer agency relationship. But these generally far outweigh the disadvantages of having an influencer manager. So as long as you have a really great manager looking after your business, any fees that you might pay to that manager are easily recouped by increased income, the professionalism and all these benefits that we've just spoken about. However, there are are some disadvantages to the brand to influencer agency relationship. Influencer only agencies, that is agencies that only represent influencers, may have limited opportunities to pitch influencers for a broader range of work compared to a full talent agency. So that is a talent agency that represents a broader range of income producing talent like celebrities, actors, public speakers and so on. There is the cost. Agencies take a cut of the commission and they're going to be driven to place their talent roster into a campaign. And sometimes this means that the brand influencer fit might not be as organic leading to less authentic content. The influencer manager or the agency is trying to generate income for their agency. So they may look to encourage a brand to work with talent that's not necessarily the best fit. And then that doesn't lead to the best outcome of the campaign. And there's also a financial cost because agencies mark up the talent cost. They often add administration and other fees. And this increases the cost to the brand of working with managed talent. So brands that are experienced and value influencer marketing don't mind paying that cost because it gives all the other benefits of the streamlined process that we just spoke about. But it is a real cost. And if budgets are tight, brands will look to reduce their talent costs so that negotiation process is going to be there. Let's now take a look at talent managers and scouts. We don't often use the word scouts, but it does play a role in a talent manager's brief. High profile influencers often work with talent managers. These talent managers represent a wider section of talent beyond influencers. So on the talent roster, they will have influencers, celebrities, business leaders, public speakers, actors, authors, innovators, 
all types of creatives and professionals that generate income by working with brands or working in their space. Talent managers often have an exclusive portfolio of talent and this means that brands can only work with those individuals through the agency. They will often maintain a portfolio of non-exclusive talent who can be booked directly through the agency, through various agencies or even in the direct-to-brand relationship. And in addition to managing talent, these talent managers often act as scouts. So they're hired by brands to find suitable candidates for their campaign even if the talent isn't signed to their agency. So the brand might have a really great relationship or an agreement with a particular talent management agency and the talent manager and the brand have explored the current talent roster and they haven't found someone suitable to fulfil the deliverables of the campaign. What the talent manager will then do is go to market and find someone suitable to fill the campaign brief. And that might mean approaching other influencer or talent agencies or generally scouting the market to find someone who's going to be successful in delivering on that campaign brief. So scouting is something that's not often spoken about, but it actively happens and agencies fulfill that important role when they're working with brands. So a talent manager will take care of all the same things that an influencer manager will do, brand collaborations, sponsorships, and all the commercial opportunities that might come through for you to make money from your influence and handle that really streamlined communication, negotiation, and contract process. They have the same advantages and disadvantages as working with influencer managers or influencer agencies. And there's a few extra considerations that you need to make. Some additional advantages of working with talent managers is that talent managers will have a diverse talent portfolio. So this means the nature of inquiries that come into the agency are more likely to be broader than influencer-only agencies. Think of influencer agencies being quite niche and typically their portfolio is influencers only. The brand goes to an influencer agency, they're looking for influencers. When a client comes into a talent agency, that brief might be quite broad and there's lots more opportunities for a talent manager to put you forward for a campaign because the brand might not necessarily want an influencer. They might want casting for a show or they might want some other deliverables, public speaker, and the talent manager can slot you in or put you forward for that brief. So think of having a talent manager as a personal advocate for you in the industry. They have networks, they negotiate deals, and they ensure that you get the best out of commercialising your influence and they give you personalised attention and access to opportunities that come through the agency. A disadvantage of working with a talent manager is that there is a higher threshold, there's a higher level of experience and success that you'll need to prove before a good talent manager will sign you to the agency. They will want to know that you're capable of meeting or generating a certain level of income and generating a certain level of inquiry. This means that if you're starting out in the space, it is unlikely that a credible or experienced agency is going to want to sign you. You need to show that you're getting lots of quality inquiries that the talent manager can then take and convert into contracts and income for you. So there is a higher threshold and talent managers aren't a pathway that's available to everyone. Let's now take a look at influencer marketing platforms. With the rise of the influencer marketing 
industry and the digital age that we live in, there has been a growth of platforms where influencers and brands can meet, kind of like Tinder for brands and influencers. Many of these platforms operate all around the world and it's quite easy to find one that's in your country or local to your area. You simply need to open up your browser and type in influencer marketing platforms and put in your country name, generate a list and check them out. Think of these platforms as a digital marketplace. The brands will post the campaign, their requirements, and influencers can pitch or apply for that campaign work. The advantages of these platforms is it really democratizes influencer marketing. Even new influencers starting out in their career can get noticed by brands. There's often ratings and review systems and you have a nice clear communication pathway to liaise with a brand and put yourself forward for brand work. And for brands, it's easy to scale campaigns and find the right fit for their campaign based on metrics and budget. It also provides brands with access to a wide range of influencers. So there's typically many, many influencers on these platforms and it's easy for brands to go to mass market, scale up those campaigns with lots and lots of talent just by using the one platform. And for brands now, many of these platforms offer account managers if the brands are spending a certain amount of money through the platforms. So they almost act in the role of that talent manager, scout or influencer manager as well for a higher level of spend. And that provides the brand with all the additional benefits that we've discussed previously in the segment, but also it provides you with those benefits too. If you're doing a great job, you're really active on the platform, you're producing great content, your feedback and ratings reviews are good, that's going to elevate you and bring you to the attention of account managers on the platform and they're more likely to consider you. However, there is a downside and some disadvantages to influencer marketing platforms. Often it's very numbers focused. The brands are driven by budget and the negotiation process may not be there. So you have to pitch yourself in, you've got to pitch your content and a rate and you simply might not get any feedback from the brand other than that you've been unsuccessful. So it can be really difficult to know how to position your value through a platform because you don't have that open dialogue and communication process that enables you to negotiate on a campaign. Another disadvantage is that Mid and top tier talent typically won't be found on influencer marketing platforms. These platforms tend to be more suited to nano and micro influencers who are starting out in their career and therefore more likely to offer cut price content to land the gig, which unfortunately doesn't represent value for the influencer or creator, those doing the work. They can be pretty impersonal and often too heavily weighted on budgets over quality of content and audience quality. We're now into the final pathway that we're going to discuss in today's episode and that's networking events and referrals. Probably could have separated them but we're going to bundle them up into this final discussion point. We know that the digital and social world is huge and, you know, it's very powerful. It gives you access to touch a number of people through your content. But there is an undeniable value in human connection. For as much as we all spend time on platforms and in this digital space, we still need that human connection. And this is where events, conventions, workshops, even brand launch parties 
can be really great places to meet brands because brands might be scouting for talent at these events, but it's also an opportunity to put yourself forward and show the human side, the offline side of your personality to brands and agencies. So it's important that you bring these networking events into your personal marketing mix and have a goal where you can attend so many events to put yourself out there, the physical you out to meet with brands. There really are good advantages to this because as we just said, brands often discover new talents at these influencer focused events. And for you, it's a chance to showcase your personality, your passion and uniqueness beyond your online avatar. It's the chance for you to build relationships and you might just get noticed by a brand representative that's really impressed by your charisma or approach. Having worked with many hundreds of talent over the past 10 years, I can say with confidence that for many, their online persona does not match their offline persona. Their strength really is in the digital space. So if you're capable of holding those engaging conversations and bringing your personality to life, I really do encourage you to look out for events and opportunities to mingle in the influencer space. You just never know what might come of that. Of course, like all things, there are disadvantages to networking events. Brands might not be receptive to pitches during all events. Sometimes individuals can be quite overwhelmed if not approached tactfully by talent. There's nothing worse than being at an event and you're just bombarded with people wanting to tell you all about themselves if the time and place is not appropriate. The whole work with me proposals can be really quite fatiguing from a, a, a brand or talent manager's point of view if you've just had to deal with them all night and you're there to achieve other outcomes. So consider the environment, consider approaching someone tactfully or if the time isn't right, just make a note to get in touch at a later time. You can say, hey, I saw you at this event. I can see that you're really busy and we missed the opportunity to connect, but I'd really like to be able to do that now and just sort of go into a soft pitch or whatever it is. So you need to be tactful. If you approach someone at an event and the time's not right, the time's not right. Another disadvantage is that connections might not mature post-event. And that's often for the reason that we've just discussed is that someone might have just been completely overwhelmed by so many people approaching them that names and faces and social media handles have become mixed up or deprioritized. So it can potentially lead to misplaced expectations or mismatched collaboration opportunities. You might have thought, wow, I had that really good exchange with Karen last night. She was really smiley and spent time talking to me. I think something's going to happen with that. But Karen's moved on. You know, she's gone into her day job and, and she's just moved on. So those relationships don't always mature post events so you need to be working through a strong communication strategy and brand approach strategy to make sure you have good ways to mature these connections after an event. The final thing that I wanted to speak about is the referral piece. We have mentioned this in previous episodes. If you haven't listened to those episodes I'll just recap and say that the agency space is pretty small. Your reputation is everything. Running a campaign smoothly and professionally and with commitment to successful outcomes is really important. If you leave a brand or an agency with a poor experience in working with you, they're not going to forget that and they're probably going to talk to their colleagues inside that agency and other agencies and you could potentially damage your reputation or even worse, become blacklisted. There's a lot of talent out there and no one can afford to be unprofessional 
when they're working on a campaign. Everyone needs to be positioned to genuine success for that outcome and that's going to lead to great outcomes for all. So if you've done something to potentially damage your reputation, recovering from that setback can be challenging and time-consuming. Brands just don't want results. They highly value professionalism, clear communication and a smooth collaboration experience. So failing to deliver on this can really jeopardise your future opportunities. So think about that the next time you're approaching a campaign. You need to be invested in that relationship. Now let's wrap up our learning from today's episode. Brands often execute several campaigns annually or they have campaigns running consistently throughout the calendar year. Each campaign will have its own set of objectives and given the distinct goals that each campaign will have, the approach to identifying the influences that they want to work with is going to vary depending on the goals and outcomes of that campaign. This means that brands will use a mix of different strategies to make sure that they've got the most suitable influencer fit for each campaign. By being versatile and engaged on multiple platforms with agencies, influencers and talent managers, This means that you can remain top of mind for brands and maximise your potential for partnerships and broadening your influence. Coming up in episode 9 and 10, we'll take a deeper look at talent agencies versus self-representation and we've also got a guest episode with a prominent talent agent coming up. This can help you make more informed decisions about these different pathways that are available to you when working with brands. And then in another episode down the track, we'll speak more about how you can work to develop your profile with PR, creative and advertising agencies as well. So we've got all of those pathways considered for you and you can sit down and bring them into your business plan. It's probably the first time you might have heard that, but you should have a business plan with strategies in play. If you're thinking about all of these approaches strategically and you have a plan to develop these relationships, you're going to be far more successful. So that discussion's coming up in episodes 9 and 10. In our next episode, though, episode 8, we're going to be taking a look at the rise of the micro-influencers. So if you've heard today's episode and thought, oh, I'm not, you know, I'm not ready for a, a talent agent yet or an influencer agent yet, don't worry. In our next episode, you're going to discover why brands are increasingly leaning towards working with micro-influencers and how these niche content creators are making a big splash. Will the rise of micro-influencers be the future of influencer marketing? We'll find out. All of this and more on next week's episode. I do hope you'll join me. You can download the resources from today's episode at thebusinessofinfluence.com forward slash EP7. I look forward to joining you next time. Until then, stay creative.